So drawing heads looking up. So let's start off with just sketching what a head looks like looking directly at us. So I'm going to start off with a circle. Then I'm going to find the center line. And then I'm going to cut that circle in half again horizontally. And this line will represent the brow line where the eyebrows will sit. And hairline, let's place in about right here. So we have the top of the head, hairline, brow line, then bottom of the nose, and then bottom of the chin, about right there. So next, I'm going to cut the sides of that circle off and come in at an angle for the sides of the head. I'm going to try to get equal on both sides from this distance to the center line to the outside as much as possible. Then I'll come down with the jaw and then to the chin. I like my new apartment but I am next to an airport so <laughs> you're gonna hear a lot of airplanes from now on. Helicopters and airplanes. I don't know if you just heard that the helicopter but for me that was pretty loud just now. <laughs> So let's go ahead and come over here. So I'm going to place in the neck, a little sweep for the neck. And then I'll just place in this like little V shape for the, sh like maybe a V shaped shirt or something. So you can see already that it, it looks like a face, a very basic face. And right here you can see like it almost looks like ears already from having that circle then cutting it in half and having that brow line. So the ears are going to line up with the brow, the top of the ears, and then bottom of the nose will be about where the the bottom of the ears are. This is very very much um, a generic way to think of the head, but it helps you get into the ballpark when you're drawing from life. So if you already know how to do these generic heads, you can quickly analyze the person that you're drawing. And uh, it just helps a lot to uh, draw faster and more accurately. Because when you're looking at a person, you'll it's going to deviate from this a lot, probably. But at least you have something to start off um, to work from. So here we have the glabella shape, the uh, little wedge shape between the eyes. And then I'll come down and just block in the general shape of the nose. And you can even put in that the dome of the nose, that big cartilage, and then indicate the little nostrils on the side. Maybe even this little nasal cartilage bone at the top. And now I'm going to come in for a sweep of the brow. And then I'm going to kind of take it from side to side and make sure I got it lined up nice and good here. And come down. So now I'm drawing in what's called the sunglass shape of the eye socket. My hands are a little shaky. First drawing of the morning. And then let's go down and get the rhythm for the cheekbones. Actually, yeah, that's good. That's good enough. So then it kind of indicates that plane change of the face here, too. Uh, looks like I made that third really long compared to the rest. So let's, um, let's try to bring it in just a little bit because it bothers me <laughs> that I made it so long. Okay, that's better. So for the mouth, uh, the corners of the mouth will be not halfway between the nose and the bottom of the chin, but a little bit higher. It's a mistake I used to make a lot at the beginning when I was first learning how to draw people. I would place the mouth directly between the bottom of the chin and the bottom of the nose. And it just didn't look, it wasn't in proportion, it just looked kind of funny. And we can even come up here in the eyes and do the sweep for the, the upper eyelids. 
place in this iris. Let's finish off with the uh, the hairline here. Comes down. It's got this nice little wedge shape. And then the ears. So that's your basic head looking straight at us. So if I take a line across for the top, then the hairline, the brow, and also the top of the ears, bottom of the nose, and also the bottom of the ears, and bottom of the chin. Those are our indications of the features of the face as it's looking directly at us. So now let's see what happens when we tilt the head back. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to get the head the same size. So let's come up here, that's the top of the circle. And the bottom of the circle is over here. So let's draw that circle again. And cut it in half, or uh, find the center line. And then try to do the brow. So some things are gonna happen, whoops. Let me fix my paper here. So what's gonna happen is this space is gonna become smaller, this one also, and so on and so on. So as the head tilts back, the perspective is gonna change where this space is gonna be larger than this one, and so on and so on. So here's the top of the head. And instead of having the hairline here, we're gonna bring it up further. And then same for the brow. So the brow is actually going to be, I'm going to place it about right there, bottom of the nose. I'm going to bring that up a little bit too. And then the chin, I'll bring it up to about right, let's do about right here. So let's cut the sides off. Actually, let me use a post it note to find the correct width of the face, make sure I got that the same on this guy. So let's slice that off. So what's gonna happen is, I'm gonna have this wrapping around the form, like so. Cause now it's like, kinda like a it's like a can of tomatoes tilted over. So like if we had if we had our can of tomatoes, tomatoes sitting on the table and we're looking at it like straight on like that, that's like this guy. But now we have it sitting, it's tilted back. So now there's gonna be a perspective change and we're gonna see underneath it. And it's gonna look something like that. So we're gonna see underneath that can. In this case, it's gonna be underneath the neck, it's gonna be underneath the nose, and so on. So if we come back over here, let's go ahead and sketch in our eyes, let's do the glabella shape between the eyes. Then the nose is actually going to change shape. So here it's more like, so we had that circle, we had the nostril. So that's that nose right there, but over here it's actually going to show more underneath it. And there's gonna be a curve for the bottom. So we're gonna start to see underneath that nose, like so. So let's draw that. And the eyes. And then the lips are gonna be closer to the bottom of the nose from this perspective. I can place the nodes in the mouth about right here. And then it's gonna curve because of that, that perspective, that cylinder wrapping around the face. 
and then the bottom lip, and then our chin rhythm. And then also, see the jawline is comes down and then across. In this case, it's going to be kind of the opposite. Create this little, it creates this little wedge shape. And we start to see underneath the neck and the throat, like so. And then the neck, the actual the sternocleidomastoids, these muscles on the side, they'll start to flare out a little bit as that muscle has to be more engaged to hold the head up. That's also what guys used to do in my old neighborhood when they were trying to look tough and they come up on you <laughs> and they'll tilt their head back and do like this, uh, this show of like no fear or whatever. And uh, it's kind of funny. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a flaring um, of the neck muscles to make yourself look tougher. It's a really odd thing that humans do. Um, another thing that happens when the head tilts back is that the ear will actually move down. It'll look like it's moving down on the head. So here we have the top of the ear lining up with the brow, but here the brow is wrapping, <clears throat> excuse me, is actually wrapping around that cylinder. So the ear is dropping much lower. I could probably actually have made the ear even more lower than I just did, but you get the idea of the concept here, that the ears are going to move down. So another thing is, see how we have the uh, sunglass shape, it's round? Well again, because we're tilting back, like here, the can, so that's going to flatten out. The sunglass shape is going to curve around. You might get a little bit right here, but not as extreme as we did originally. And then we can come up here for the eyelids. And then he'll be looking up like so. Let's go ahead and do the hair. Oh yeah, the cheekbones, so it's from side to side, make sure we got them. And then that plain change on the face. Kind of correlates again with that mid-cheek furrow. I talked about in other videos, the nasal labial fold. So that's the basic idea of the perspective of the head as it starts to tilt backwards and the person is looking upwards. You start to see underneath the neck, underneath the nose, and the thirds of the face. If they were, in our case, uh, almost equal parts, they would start to warp and you'll lose that, um, that, that measurement. It'll start to uh, distort and the first third will be shorter than the, the middle. And then, of course, the longest will be the, on the jaw, the lower third. So yeah, I just wanted to go ahead and show you how that works. And this comes from the uh, the Loomis um, book. It's the uh, Head and Hands, and this is from plate seven. And in that plate, there's like 20 heads from different uh, angles and such. And one row has, I think, four heads. But I just wanted to make a quick video, and I just drew two heads just to get the concept um, for you. So I hope that helped uh, answer a couple of questions I had about um, how to draw heads looking up and the proportions. And uh, this is how I like to um, kind of think about it. And I do these little doodles actually throughout the day uh, if I'm wherever I'm at, if I'm at work. Or waiting in line somewhere, you know, whatever, a coffee shop. Of course, that hasn't happened in a while since 
uh, COVID since everything's shut down. There's no coffee shops now. So, um, yeah, just uh, try this um, little exercises, doodle. And if you can, I'll put the link up to the, uh, the PDF file for that book. Um, I recently uh, discovered um, that somebody had it up on their website. And it's an old version of the book. And it's in a PDF uh, file. It's really good. So um, that'll save you, some, uh, save you some money so you don't have to buy that book. Um, but you can still uh, learn from it. It's a, such an excellent resource. So I highly recommend you check that out. The link will be below this video. And thank you guys for um, everything, man. Like I started Patreon last week, last weekend. And uh, I already have uh, 14 um, supporters. And that just blew my mind. <laughs> and I really, uh, I'm really appreciate, I really appreciate you guys. And uh, let me uh, pull up the uh, the website here. So here's the website for the, my Patreon. Uh, it's at uh, patreon.com backslash Bradwin, B-R-A-D-W-I-N-N. And I only have one tier right now. I just want to start out with one. It's $8 per month. But the main ones um, are the weekly post and also the uh, critiques. So if you're working on a drawing and you need somebody to uh, take a look at it, I'm here for you. So like I said, I got uh, 14 from uh, when I just started last week, which I'm so happy about. That's really cool. And this is the uh, the drawing that I have up right now, and I broke it down into three parts. Just the lay-in phase, second part is beginning the shading, and then the final rendering and such. So uh, yeah, so come on over and uh, please support me. And I'll add tiers as I go along, but for right now I got uh, just one, and it's $8 a month. So here's the uh, PDF version of drawing the head and hands. And I think it's on page, is it page 25? Yeah, page 25, and it's plate seven, action of the head on the neck. This is a really good page, and uh, basically what I did on this video was go over the concept of this line right here, where it's straight on view and his head tilts back. So that's where it came from, and this book is really good. I highly recommend it, and you can find it here in the link below. It's a PDF file, and uh, it'll really help you a lot. And it's helped me and everybody else I know. So, <laughs> so again, thank you for uh, checking out this video, and I hope to see you on Patreon soon. Thank you. Bye.